Hello, welcome back to my world of stuff. My name is Paul Mount. Hope you're enjoying this bitter, chilly, nasty January weather. I hate January with a vengeance. So I don't like to do very much if I can possibly avoid it. But I thought today, as I've got a few new bits and pieces, I would do the first physical media show and tell video of 2024. I was going to do one last week, but I only had about six bits and pieces I picked up. I've got a few more since then. So I think it's time to show you what I got. Yeah, welcome back. Yes, it's physical media time. I've got a few new bits and pieces I picked up. A couple of things on the online sale, a bargain pickup from a local charity shop and a really nice book set, uh, which I'm going to unbox. That arrived this morning from, oh, I hope it didn't give away the title, from the Folio Society. I splashed out on a selection of titles from their sale. Well, three titles by a favourite author. And I'll show you that at the end of the video because I'm sure you want to see all the Blu-rays and DVDs first. Uh, it's mainly DVDs, in fact, but there are a couple of Blu-rays in here, so let's crack on. First one I bought, I think I got this just before Christmas, perhaps. This was six ninety nine on Amazon. DVD, no less. DVD is a six-disc set, or in fact a six-film set. Is it six discs? Yeah, it is actually six discs. Uh, of the Universal Dracula Legacy Collection. All the original Dracula films starring... Uh, Bella Lugosi as Dracula. We've got the original Dracula, 1931. Dracula's daughter and the Spanish version of Dracula. Son of Dracula, House of Frankenstein and House of Dracula. I've got, I'm sure I've got these on some format somewhere, but it's nice to have them on a nice cheap DVD box set. And I think with the Universal Horror Films, although I've got the big Universal Blu-ray box set, I don't think it matters that much having them on DVD. The um, slightly reduced picture quality probably enhances the experience. It, it's like you're back there in the 30s. Not that I was ever there, I must point out. Not that old. So this is a nice little set, 6 dollars on Amazon. It may well still be available if you fancy it. Here's an interesting, potentially controversial one. I think if you saw my top 10 list films of the year, and I hope you have, it's still there on my top 10 TV. One of my favourite films, I stretch my own rules in relation to that particular list, by including a film which hasn't actually been released in the UK. You can't get it anywhere. Uh, it never came into cinemas, it's never been released on streaming, there are no physical releases it, but I love the film and I wanted to get it. So I just went on eBay to see if there are any copies I could import. You can import it on Amazon, but it's extremely expensive. And I saw it quite cheap from, I think it was somewhere in China, where it was, I think, with postage came to about 10 quid. And it looked very nice. It was the, the film in a Blu-ray case. Whether it arrived, it wasn't quite that, but I managed to salvage it. It's The film is The Last Voyage of the Demeter. This is the film which uh, picks up the events of a short passage or a short chapter in Bram Stoker's Dracula, what happens aboard the Demeter ship that is taking the casket with Dracula's body uh, from Transylvania over to the UK. And this is a fantastic film, which, as I say, didn't do very well in America and unfortunately hasn't had a release over here. But I really wanted a physical copy of it. So I ordered it. But when it arrived, it didn't come in the case, even though it was advertised as being in a case. It just came in with this printed cover. You know, I mean, it's fine. It looks okay. But it's nothing, you know, it's printed cover. And the disc, and I looked at the disc and thought, this is just a DVD-R. I've been well ripped off here. However, I played the disc and it's perfect the picture's perfect it is a blu-ray copy it's got all the special features so all i did is bought a new blu-ray disc cover and it fits snugly in there so although i felt i'd been ripped off i don't think i was really because it was quite cheap uh, there was no extra postage and the cover does fit quite nicely and snugly into the blu-ray case so it's I suppose it's as good as having a physical release. And as it doesn't seem to be having a physical release over here, I don't normally go for bootlegs and pirate copies and things. I don't think this is that, to be honest, but it's, I think it shows how good these things are these days, that you know, the cover is perfectly serviceable. The disc itself is as good as an official one. So very happy to have that in the collection. Look out for this film. I'm hoping it's going to arrive somewhere in the UK this year because it is such a good film. Going back to Amazon, 
Um, I remember the days when, in the early days of DVD and Blu-ray, when you, I'd really look forward to those New Year sales on Amazon and places like CD Wow and um, what was the other one? Uh, Play.com. <clears throat> I used to do their sales in the New Year. Usually Christmas night, Christmas Boxing night, they'd have the sales, they'd slash prices of things. And I'd be pressing away, all of that, all of that, uh, building up quite a basket. Doesn't happen quite so much now, of course, with physical media on the decline but I still like to pick up some bargains and a couple of things caught my eye on Amazon so I picked them up I got the first two seasons on Blu-ray for ludicrously cheap prices of a series called Travellers this is a series that ran for three years uh, 2018 2017, 18 and 19 stars Eric McCormack who I believe is the star of Will and Grace though I never saw that series I must admit this is a very clever time travel apocalyptic sort of series about these travellers from the future who know that there's an apocalypse apocalypse coming in the past and they time travel by occupying the bodies of people in the 21st century and it's like a conspiracy a vaguely x filesy thing i saw the first series never saw the second or third series i think it's all on netflix series one was 3.99 series two i think was 4.99 i don't know if the third series has been released i will track it down but i will at some point at my leisure, work my way through this. It was a very clever, gritty sort of series. Yeah, it's available from Dazzler Media. And I say it is on, well, it certainly was on Netflix, as far as I know, it's still that time. Really looking forward to getting stuck into that. Could be some winter viewing for me on that one. Not that I haven't got plenty of other things to watch, but that's beside the point. I also picked this one up in the sale. Network fans will recall the collapse of Network Video last year, and I did a, a, a video commemorating that, which actually went on very well. And I did a video showing some of my uh, collection. I picked up Beast. This is the Nigel Neal anthology series. I think it's six, seven paranormal, supernatural type stories. This was shown on ITV back in 1976. I had this and I'll put my hand up. I'll put my hand up here in the great rush of panic after network collapse. I sold mine on eBay and I think I sold it for about 25 quid. And all, with all these things on eBay, I don't scalp. I don't. I didn't list it at twenty five quid. I listed it at ninety nine p and waited for the bill on it, and it went up quite high. However, it's back on Amazon now for seven ninety nine, and I thought, well, I'll get myself a copy to replace it then. And I can't say I won't sell this again. But yeah, I was quite pleased to get this. And there's a lot of Amazon stuff on there at the moment. Some quite obscure titles, at good prices. So I think they've obviously come into a lot of Amazon stock and are shifting it quite quickly. So you might want to look online. I think I probably will keep this actually because it is sort of a classic series. I've not seen it for years. Yeah, so I'll probably hang on to that one this time. Beasts from Nigel Neal. A couple of, well, the rest of charity shop pickups. In fact, I picked this up last week at a local charity shop. I've never seen it and I hear it's supposed to be very good and I do like some of the cast in it. This is series one and two of the Channel 4 comedy Green Wing, which I think is a surreal soap, part innovative comedy drama, largely set despite a bizarre lack of medical content in a hospital. Uh, Devised and produced by Victoria Powell, the show stars Tamsin Gregg. It stars Julian Rind, Rind Tut, uh, Stephen Mangan, Mark Heap, who's one of my favourite quirky comedy actors, and many, many more. As I say, I've never seen this. This was a pound in a charity, in a fairly local charity shop for the two series, which come in nice sort of slip case, transparent slipcase things. So, um, yeah, the series that's... I can't say I've always been looking forward to watching, but I, I'm aware of it, and I know it was one of those cult things that I think if I'd watched it at the time, I would have enjoyed it. I think it only ran for about two series, a couple of specials, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. This was a pound, incidentally. And I thought for a pound, well, you know, you can't go wrong, can you? That's Green Wing Series 1 and 2. That would have been it for pickups. Were it not for a trip to a local charity shop a couple of days ago, where they normally sell DVDs 10 for a pound. And I have a look through them occasionally. And that's the usual bits and pieces. So I don't often find anything I want there. But this week there were a special New Year's offer, 10 for 50p. So I managed to rummage through and find 10 that cost me 5p each. And I decided to do it particularly because of this first one. This is Count Dracula. This is the BBC's 1977, I'm going to say. Uh, yeah, 22nd of December 1977. This was a very, very classy production of Dracula, starring Louis Jordan as Count Dracula, Frank Finley as Van Helsing, 
with Susan Penhaligan, Judy Bowker, Mark Burns, Jack Shepard, and Bosco Hogan as the ill-fated Jonathan Harker. I've got this already, but when I saw it, I thought, well, that's, you know, you don't get to see something like that out in the wild very often for 5p. Um, I may eBay it. Um, I can get a quid, a pound voucher for it in CEX, which covers, which doubles the cost of these things. So uh, I may do that. But it's just nice to see it because it's, uh, it is a great production. If you've never seen it, it's uh, really well done. It, this is the story, as Doctor Who fans will know. There's always a Doctor Who angle to these things. This is uh, the story that caused the axing of a Doctor Who serial in 1977 called The Vampire Mutations by Terence Dix. Because that was about vampires, and the BBC were doing this prestige version of Dracula, they didn't really want Doctor Who <clears throat> upstaging them, if you like, by doing a vampire story at the same time. So that story was bumped away and eventually reappeared a state of decay a few years later. This is a very good production, though. It's very, it is very lavish. There's lots of film sequences which make it look more lavish. And then it's got that mix of BBC videotape studio which sort of is a bit is a jarring. And that was something which, of course, continued right into the 1980s of the BBC. But this is one of the best versions of Dracula. And it's interesting because Louis Jordan, who is this sort of romantic French film star, uh, he, he doesn't strike you as the type to be a vicious killing vampire, but he's very subtle in this. It's very good. And even, as I said, I've got this already, but I'm, I think I'm going to watch it again soon because I haven't seen it for ages. Some others I picked up. This is a great film. Despite starring Brie Larson, who everybody hates, apparently. This is Room. This, of course, goes back to 2015. This was Brie Larson's breakthrough, directed by Lenny Abramson, based on the best-selling novel. This is a, a simple but effective and chilling story about this young woman who is locked in a room with her young child. She can't escape. And uh, her captor sort of feeds her and abuses her until she manages to find a way to come up with an escape plan. It's very good, very tense film. I remember seeing this at the cinema. A very gripping film. And for 5p, nice. This is another one I hear is supposed to be very good, but I've never seen it. Matthew McConaughey in Mud, <clears throat> which dates back to 2013. Dangerous but charismatic fugitive. No, not me. Matthew Mahonahy is hiding out from bounty hunters on a remote island in the Mississippi when he's discovered by two young boys. Uh, an unlikely alliance forms as the boys struggle to help Mud escape his pursuers whilst at the same time reuniting with his long-time love, Juniper, played by Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, I remember this coming out and it was getting sort of quite good reviews, but it sort of passed me by. So um, it's another one to add to the to-watch pile. As indeed uh, several of these... Slightly schlocky horror films, which I picked up just to bulk up the numbers. This is called Julia's Eyes. It says Guillermo del Toro presents because he didn't direct it. He probably produced it. A woman suffering from a degenerative sight disease finds her blind twin sister Sarah hanging in the basement of her house. Everything points to suicide, but Julia's compelled to investigate, which she intuitively knows is murder. So it sounds a bit uh, thrillery. Um, yeah. Looks all right. Uh, Nicholas Cage. This is a film I'm not aware of of his. This goes back to 2018. It's called Between Worlds. Supernatural thriller starring Nicholas Cage as down-on-his-luck truck driver Joe, who is haunted by the memory of his deceased wife and child. When Joe meets Julia, a spiritually gifted woman who enlists him in a desperate effort to find the lost soul of a comatose daughter, Billy... But the spirit of Joe's dead wife, Mary, proves stronger, possessing the young woman's body and determined to settle her unfinished business with it. Sounds very schlocky. I guess I'll get round to it at some point. We also have Under Pressure with Martin, uh, Charles Sheen and Mary Winningham. Mm -hmm. He's a decorated firefighter. He has a high standing in the community, but in private, he's a sadist and a bully. He prepared to play Russian roulette with his own family. Um, yeah, it's sort of a um, neighbour, sort of one of those neighbour rivalry thriller type things um yeah it was just a buck up the numbers as was this one liam neeson no oh yeah liam neeson it is liam neeson sorry uh, it's liam neeson justin long and christina ricci in after life after a horrific car accident anna wakes up to find the local funeral director elliot dean deacon preparing her body for a funeral confused terrified and feeling still very much alive Anna doesn't believe she's dead. Despite the funeral director's reassurances, she's merely in transition to the afterlife. Elliot convinces her he has the ability to communicate with the dead and is the only one to blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, fairly standard sort of 
supernatural dross. But I don't know, sometimes these things can be sort of a guilty pleasure, although I don't really like that expression. The last couple, three in fact, uh, this is Cloud Atlas. Starring uh, everybody, really. Tom Hanks, Sally Berry, Jim Broadbent, Hugo Weaving, Jim Sturgis, Ben Wishaw, James Darcy, Keith David, Susan Sound and Hugh Grant. This is uh, based on six, well, six stories spanning centuries. One soul, Tom Hanks and Halle Berry. One soul, Tom Hanks and Halle Berry lead an all-star cast in interwoven tales as time shifts between past, present and future. Ooh. This came out 2012. Um, I know it's based on the best-selling book. Um, but it's always passed me by, and uh, I know it, I don't think it's particularly well regarded. I think it's, the book I think is quite dense. Just checking that these just all in immaculate condition, to be fair. So um, yeah, it's it's a fairly lengthy film. It looks quite challenging. Also looks quite spectacular, and it's also quite long at 165 minutes. Uh, but I'm yeah, I'm intrigued. I mean, you know what it's like if you buy these, if you buy Blu-rays and DVDs, you always think, oh yeah, I get around to watching that possibly never do but it certainly yeah it looks like it could be interesting this i have seen many years ago this is good fun uh, disney at its schmaltziest perhaps uh, enchanted starring amy adams patrick dempsey james marston timothy spall edina menzel and susan sarandon busy girl this i i did like this sort of musical comedy musical about this princess who is uh, banished from the land of Andalusia and thrust upon the very unmagical live-action world of modern-day Manhattan. It's good fun. I did see it years ago. I might actually still have it. But 5p, 5p. The final one. There's a comedy series from BBC Scotland that ran for many years called Still Game. The story of these two uh, abrasive, bad-tempered pensioners living in this high-rise block of flats in Glasgow. And it's the story of them and their friends and their little escapades. A sort of a grittier last of summer wine in a way. Uh, it ran for years and years. It only finished a couple of years ago. They've done some live shows as well. This is Still Game Live in Glasgow in 2014. I think this was before the series stopped. I think it stopped because the two lead actors fell out. Then they got back to friendly again and they did a few more series. This should be good fun because I did like the, the humour of this. It's... Uh, it's one of those comedies that we don't get enough of these days that you like the characters and even though they sometimes do stupid things you sort of root for them and want them to come through and you don't get enough of those we used to do a lot of that sort of comedy on British television now it's more about being sweary and gritty and you know urban and you've got to have messages and uh, fulfil certain demographics and things this is just a, a good well written very funny very well performed comedy about silly people and that's sometimes enough right that's all the physical media as such uh, one thing to show you now is this book set which came today ordered this from the folio society if you know the folio society they do these very posh very exclusive very expensive versions of classic novels and i know this came out last year and i thought i'd like to get that but it was pretty pricey new year sale slash half price still a bit pricey i suppose but you know that's what credit cards are for so i picked up this rather nice box set of three of the best known novels by one of my favourite classic authors of science fiction John Wyndham it's the John Wyndham Folio Society set of three of his best known books Day of the Triffids which is my favourite book of all time absolutely love that book Midwich Cuckoos I'm interested in revisiting that because of the TV series from last year then The Chrysalid which I don't think has ever been filmed they come in this lovely dirty old box and these are oh, look, these, they've even got sort of these little sheets in between them to protect them that's obviously day of the triffids beautiful cover depicting a triffid mid sting oh really nice illustrations inside as well oh yes this book is so influential to me in terms of what I like from fiction. I've read lots of books about end of the world type things. I've even tried to write a couple. I love those films about society collapsing and some sort of, you know, terror being visited upon humankind. I'm a happy soul. We've also got the Midwich Cuckoos, which of course is the story of these children who are um, born of an alien entity, if you like. Um, has this got illustrations? Yep, yeah, again, this has got some very nice illustrations inside. It's a lovely set. Uh, 
very nice. I, I, you know, they. I mean, I don't know much about Folio because I bought I bought a couple of their Marvel things that they've done, and they really do print these things beautifully, and really present them very well. And then we have the chrysalids. I don't know a lot about the chrysalids, so I will have a, a read of that again. Anyway, uh, again, it's very nicely presented. Nice, and the, the illustrations are sort of more artistic than, uh, you know, than. Uh, cartoons if you like but that's a lovely i'm very pleased to get that I, i've got windham sets i've got every time i see a a copy of david triffid saying a charity shop and it's a, a a version i haven't got i feel obliged to pick it up so i've got about six different copies of it uh it's such, uh, such an evocative book of that sort of haunting post-apocalyptic thing so that looks really nice in that uh, lovely set which is going to look fantastic up on my bookshelf john windham Right, that's it then. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick update. As I said, I was going to do it last week when I had six things to do, but when I had the new stuff the other day, I thought, right, it's time for an update. So, yeah, that's the stuff I've picked up in the last couple of weeks. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. If you've picked up anything interesting in the physical media realm lately, let me know. Leave a comment. And uh, I will see you soon. Coming up next on this channel, I think, oops, will be a review of Poor Things, which is the latest film by Yorgos, Yorgos Lanthimos, who is a very quirky director, who has directed two films I'm very fond of, The Lobster and The Favourite, a few years ago. And his new film, Poor Things, is a sort of a, seems to be a take on the Frankenstein story, but I'm sure there's a lot more to it than that. I've seen that on Friday, so there will be a review for that up on the weekend sometime. Right, thank you for watching. Once again, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Welcome, incidentally, to some new subscribers, a few newbies who've joined up. Stick around, why don't you? Lots of stuff to come, lots of stuff back on the channel. Knock yourselves out. I'll see you soon until I do. Keep taking the stuff.